So this is real retro gaming. Welcome back to my channel and the second video in a row related to 8088 CPUs. In my last episode I was comparing the Intel 8088 to a Soviet clone on a 10 MHz mainboard, so I can also recommend to watch this video, I will put a link below. But today we will have a comparison to another compatible CPU for XD boards, the NEC V20. The NEC V20, or also called MuPD7108, was a microprocessor made by NEC. It was both pin and object code compatible with the Intel 8088, with an instruction set similar to that of the Intel 8188, with some extensions. The V20 was introduced in March 1984. The V20's die comprised 63,000 transistors, more than the double as the 29,000 of the Intel 8088 CPU. The chip was designed for a clock duty cycle of 50% compared to the 33% duty cycle used by the 8088. Internal differences meant that the V20 could typically complete more instructions in a given time than the Intel 88 running at the same frequency. So we have here basically one of the first, uh, let's say, overdrives for an x86 mainboard. A CPU which is pin and instruction compatible and you just need to swap the CPUs to get a better performance. And exactly this is what we are going to do in this video. Today I choose another board as in my last video, the Super Turbo 2 board which is basically clocked at 4.77 MHz and can get set to 8 MHz, therefore turbo, <laughs> however you can consider 8 MHz as turbo. We have over here 512 KB of RAM installed, made by Siemens. Over here we have 8 8-bit ISA slots to extend your system and next to it two 40-pin sockets, one for the CPU and another one for upgrading with a floating point unit. Usually you don't have a BIOS to enter on an XD board and everything needs to get set by jumpers and dip switches as we have over here. And luckily I have also the original manual available for this cool board. So this is some really vintage old paper where something, let's say the basics, are described. A big difference to manuals from uh, main boards nowadays. They're a little bit more sophisticating, the boards you can get today, but nicely described all the jumper settings, uh, the pinouts of all the connectors, as well as the uh, position for the deep switches here, which is very handy to have available at the end. For the video card I will take today this 8-bit Trident VGA card. It comes with the Trident 8800 chip and 256 kilobytes of video memory. This video card can get expanded to 512 kilobytes video memory as well. On the side we can see here the 15-pin VGA connector as well as the 9-pin connector for EGA graphics. So at the end a very beautiful lovely 8-bit card which fits perfectly into a XT setup. Yeah, then we need a basic I.O. controller, so we have here a just simple I.O. controller which provides a serial and a parallel interface with some Winbond and StarTech chips on it. So then we need also a disk drive and for that I will take this beautiful Seagate ST225N 20 MB CASI drive. I got this drive in sealed, completely new condition and yeah, it fits also quite nice into this setup as well as this rare Seagate ST02 uh, SCSI controller. I reviewed the hard disk drive and the controller already once in the video, so if you're interested on that to get more details about this set here, just watch the video as well. Yeah, for the Intel equivalent, I will take this 8088 CPU made by Fujitsu in Japan. It comes in a very beautiful white ceramic package and got also gold pins. Yeah, Fujitsu produced the 8088 under an Intel license uh, and so this is a, the completely same CPU as the Intel one. Yeah, then we have also a proper floating point unit, the Intel 8087. 
because at the end I'm also interested when we compare the V20 to the 8088 if the V20 can handle the floating point unit from Intel uh, by the same way or a little bit better or maybe a little bit worse. We will see it on the benchmarks at the end. Yeah, and then here we have also the competitor, the NEC D7108 or V20 in ceramic package. Actually, this is a 5 MHz version, so we will overclock it a lot to 8 MHz today. And yeah, this thing is running quite stable at 8 MHz as well. Of course, it's not so beautiful than the white one, one from Fujitsu, uh, yeah, but we should get a nice performance boost with the V20 CPU. I couldn't wait to switch on the system here and we get a nice post screen from the video card very nice and here the post screen from the BIOS Phoenix ROM BIOS version 2.27 copyright 1986 the RAM is also counting up and the SCSI controller from Seagate is reporting here as well that it found one drive very nice so then let's wait a little bit it takes a while until the XD machine is booting up. Actually, it's booting DOS 3.31, an old version of DOS, which is required for Windows 1.01, which I would like to try later. So, as you can see here, DOS 3.31. Let's make also some check disk to hear the nice sound of the hard disk drive a little bit. And it's reporting here also that 20 megabytes in total disk space. So, let's start with Norton this info what we can see here on the 8088 and it's showing here the Intel 8088 at 8 MHz as well as the floating point unit the 8087 so the CPU benchmark gives us here 1.7 points at the end so this is 0.7 more than the original XT with 4.77 MHz then let's see what we can get here in check it for our CPU benchmarks for the CPU speed, we get here a value of 576 dry stones and a floating point unit here with 193.2 kilo whetstones. So next one is landmark and here we get an AT equivalent of 4.09 MHz. So also interesting. Next one, Dr. Hart. Here we get a CPU score of 462 while the floating point unit gets 227. I think we have now enough of benchmarks from the 8088 and it's time to swap now the CPUs. Yeah, gently with my self-made tool I'm removing here the beautiful white ceramic CPU to place here the NEC V20 chip. But now it's getting interesting with the benchmarks. At Norton Swiss Info, we can see here the NEC V20 uh, reported at 13 MHz, which is very strange because we have still 8 MHz on the board. The CPU benchmark shows here a score of 1.8. This is 0.1 higher than we got before on the 8088. Very interesting. Also, check it is coming up with much better values here on the V20, 640 dry stones on the CPU speed and 207.5 kilo weight stones. Landmark is also showing up with the AT equivalent of 4.98 MHz. This is 0.9 MHz higher than we got before on the 8088. Also, Dr. Hart is coming up with much better values, 543 instead of 462 for the CPU speed and 251 instead of 227 for the floating point unit. In the chart means this now for Norton Sysinfo 6% higher performance on the V20 and 21% more on the landmark benchmark. Also at check it we gain here 11% for the CPU speed and 5% on the floating point unit.
Dr. Hart is measuring 17% more at the end on the CPU speed and 10% more on the floating point unit. Yeah, but why are there so many different values? Um, I think this is because of the different test methods each program has. I just wanted to try all of them uh, to get a feeling um, of the different improvements we can get here. So at the end it's just about uh, 5 to 15% in, uh, for, in average of uh, improvement you will gain with the V20 CPU. Yeah, but now let's play around a little bit with software and ladies and gentlemen, I'm presenting you here Windows 1.01, .01, the first Windows version 35 years ago, loading here on the V20. So very, very nice. It took me a while to install this here that it is working and to look at that simple design. We got here a simple uh, file explorer to see the programs. You can change here the view to programs and you get here some programs which are pre-installed on Windows here, for instance, a notepad uh, where you can write a little bit some letters, some word processing. Yeah, this looks really simple now today, but I can tell you back in the days, this was a huge improvement to have a graphical user interface with mouse and and some fancy colors and so on. Yeah, it was it was quite nice back in the time. So what do we have here still? Control section. You can set here the time, the date, some double click speed, whatever preferences. Yeah, here you can set the colors of your window so you could change uh, the shape of your uh, color design. So this, this was so fancy back in the time, I can remember. Uh, it was just something new we got 35 years ago. What else do we have here? Clock, an animated clock, also very fancy. But you genera younger generations from today, you might laugh now. Uh, how ridiculous is that? But I can really tell you, uh, this was back in the days, really something new and yeah, a must to have. Even though uh, when you are a child, you cannot do uh, much with it because you just were concerned about playing games and so on. But it, yeah, it was just cool to have Windows. So, yeah, this was it for Windows. Let's end this session here. Yeah, and believe it or not, also pinball flippers were existing in the early 80s and this is how they look like. Simple CGA graphics, but nevertheless, it was so fun to play with them around. Yeah, quite nice animations and some cool sound from the speaker. Yeah, it, it was fun. Or this version of Pac-Man available for PC, XT machines, nicely playable and especially if you had a VGA card with these nice colors. It's a bit slow on an XT but still playable and it made a lot of fun. And the game which I'm still playing nowadays. Mahjong, do you remember this game from back in the days? A very nice game, also playable on a 8088. Also 3D applications could run on a 8088 as long as you had a floating point unit installed. Yeah, not very fancy or very fast, but still, it was working also on an XD class machine. This was a very interesting video for me, as well with an interesting outcome. Just throw away your Intel CPU and put there the NEC V20 chip in your XT class machine and you gain about 15% of performance. Very nice and very simple solution. I didn't expect that at all. At the end, this turned out to become also a very nice 8-bit setup with some interesting testing possibilities. I hope you liked the video and if so, please subscribe and give me some comments below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.